3GS makes it super easy to build complex 3D scenes on the web. Using just the base library, I was able to make a 3D tic-tac-toe game, a Rubik's Cube demo, a 3D Wordle clone, and even an audio waveform visualizer. But if you want to take your 3D coding skills to the next level, you'll need to start working with external assets. What's going on guys? My name is Suboptimal, and in this coding tutorial, we'll go over everything you need to know about importing 3D models in 3JS. Let's jump right in. So why would you want to import a 3D model? Now obviously, if you're coding a complicated 3D game, importing models is absolutely essential. But importing a model can also be helpful when you're just getting started with 3JS. It can be an easy way to add much needed context to a 3D scene. So for example, last year I made this clone of the Rasengan from Naruto. Now I'm sure most of you already know what this is, but for those that don't, Naruto is an anime and the Rasengan is the main character's signature move. It looks something like this. Anyway, I built what I thought looked like the Rasengan, but after further inspection, I realized that it's pretty hard to understand what this blue sphere represents. It could be a weird looking orb, it could be a mana bottle, it could be, you know, a gemstone from Thanos, it could be this thing from Overwatch, or it could just be a blue star from a galaxy far, far away, right? It's hard to know exactly what a blue sphere represents. So in order to fix this ambiguity, I simply downloaded a 3D hand model from Katarina Zamai on Sketchfab and added it to the scene, all in under 10 lines of code. And with this hand model, you can clearly tell that this is supposed to represent the Rasengan from Naruto. All I'm trying to say is that knowing how to import 3D models is essential, whether you are a beginner or an advanced 3JS developer. So now that you guys understand the importance of importing models into your 3D scenes, let's talk about this different type of files that are used to represent models. So there is the GLTF file, which stands for Graphics Library Transmission Format. There's the OBG file, there's FBX, there's a voxel transmission file. So basically there's a lot of different type of files that you can use to store these 3D objects. The point of a 3D object is that it has a ton of these vertices. So if you ever open one of these files up, you're just going to see a ton of numbers. So obviously they had to optimize the way that they stored this. The one that is suggested at least for 3JS is the GLTF format. Basically, I just want you guys to know that there's multiple different types of formats that exist. You can think of this to be like YAML or JSON. If YAML and JSON files can have the same information, they're just stored a little bit differently. So just think of it that way. I'm gonna go to Sketchfab, which is the place where I usually get my 3D models. And here I just searched for dogs. Some of these you do have to pay for, but a lot of them are freely downloadable as long as you give attribution. We're gonna be using this Shiba model. And here you can see the type of attribution that the author requires. So just make sure that when you're downloading a model, um, you're giving proper credit, especially if you're gonna put it in your project. But anyway, you can click download model. We're gonna be focusing on the GLTF format. And once you download the GLTF format, you're just gonna get a zip file like this. Once you unzip it, you're gonna see something, you know, that looks sort of like this. All you gotta do is take this whole folder and put it into your project. And so inside of 3JS here, under the sixth lesson here, we're going to create an assets folder. And here I've imported the Shiba folder. So if you're sort of confused as to where I'm getting this code from, just go to the 3JS repository on my GitHub. And I made separate folders for every single tutorial. And the one that we're currently working on is the sixth import model tutorial. The next step is to just get the Shiba model loaded on the scene. So we're gonna go to our test section and here I'm just commenting out the box geometry from the setup guide. And I'm also gonna import the GLTF loader. So I'm also importing some of the other loaders just so you guys can see what's available. For example, there's the OBJ loader, there's the voxel loader, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna be focusing on the GLTF loader. The other ones work pretty similar to this one. So, you know, understanding how this one works, you should be good to go with the other ones as well. Anyway, we go to initialize it right over here. And once we do, we again, just pass in wherever the GLTF file exists. And this is going to do all the heavy lifting for us. It's gonna read the file and this file contains like thousands of vertices. So it's gonna load all those in and create a scene for us. After it loads, all we gotta do is add it to our scene. 
and then we get our Shiba Inu that looks like this. And as you can see here, it is very zoomed out. So I do want to give a quick disclaimer that sometimes models that you get from Sketchfab don't load properly. Sometimes they're too big, sometimes they're too small. So just make sure that you zoom in or zoom out appropriately. As you can see here, our Shiba model is super small, so you know that when you initially load it, you're going to want to make it a little bit bigger. So how do we do that? We can use the GLTF scene that gets passed in as any other 2JS scene. So let me rotate it on the Y axis, set the position a little bit above on the Y axis, and also scale it so that when the model initially loads in, we can see it more clearly. So I'm going to save this. And when I refresh the page, you can see that, you know, the model is a lot closer and it is rotated a little bit on the Y axis. This one is a pretty straightforward model, so it's going to load pretty quickly and we don't really have to worry too much when we think about animating it. But if you would load a really complex model, it might take a couple seconds to initially load. So what you can do if you want to, say, animate the model, for example, would be to create a, a variable like so, just initialize it to empty. And once the scene gets loaded, you can sort of track the variable here and at the end, you can animate it like so. So here I'm going to animate the model once it's loaded because if you try to animate it before it's loaded, it's just going to throw out a bunch of errors because again, the scene won't exist because you know it might take a couple seconds for this function to run. So let's reverse this and you can see here that our model is just going to be animated. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of how to import 3D models into a 3JS scene. If you made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content about 3JS and 3D programming. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.